On the morning of September 15th, 2024, the life of George G. Bloomer, a beloved pastor, inspirational speaker, and visionary entrepreneur, changed drastically and heartbreakingly. As dawn broke, Bloomer awoke only to find himself immobilized, a chilling realization that he could no longer move his legs. His limbs felt stiff, numb, and lifeless, and despite his efforts, he could not regain control. What began as a typical morning swiftly spiraled into a severe medical emergency, altering the trajectory of his life forever. Recognizing the urgency, Bloomer was rushed to the nearest medical facility. There, doctors would make a shocking discovery, sparking a sequence of events that even Bloomer, a man of deep faith, could never have anticipated. Upon his arrival at the hospital, it was immediately clear to the medical team that George's condition was far graver than it first appeared. The paralysis in his legs wasn't an isolated issue, but rather a severe warning signal of something more dangerous. The doctors, fully aware of the seriousness, ordered a series of tests and scans. The results were alarming. A blood clot had developed in his brain, blocking vital pathways and obstructing the flow of oxygen to critical regions. The diagnosis was grim. Without urgent intervention, George's brain would suffer irreversible damage. Time was of the essence as each second without proper blood flow increased the risk of further deterioration. In response to George's worsening condition, the medical team decided he needed specialized care available only at a top hospital in San Jose, California. The ambulance sped through the streets as doctors prepared for a high stakes, life or death brain surgery. Upon arrival, George was immediately taken into the operating room where an expert neurosurgical team awaited. They were ready to perform a delicate, intricate procedure, navigating through the most sensitive areas of the brain to remove the life-threatening clot. The tension was palpable as every movement and decision became critical. One slight error could result in permanent damage. The surgery was lengthy and grueling, stretching on for hours as the team worked with the utmost care to extract the clot without further complications. The room was filled with the soft hum of medical equipment and the intense focus of the doctors, each aware of how high the stakes were. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the clot was successfully removed and the immediate danger was averted. But the operation, though successful, marked only the beginning of George's arduous journey. In the days following the surgery, the devastating impact of the stroke became increasingly apparent. While the clot had been successfully extracted, its effects on George's brain were irreversible. The first tragic sign came when George lost the ability to speak, a devastating blow for a man whose voice was his greatest asset. For years, he had preached, counseled, and inspired countless people through his powerful words. This loss was not only a physical setback, but an existential one, robbing him of a central part of his identity. At first, George attempted to communicate through other means, making subtle gestures to express his emotions. A raised eyebrow, a blink, or a shift in his gaze became his primary forms of communication and his family and friends clung to these small interactions, holding on to hope for recovery. However, this hope was fleeting. Day by day, George lost control over even the smallest movements, including the ability to blink, plunging him deeper into a state of isolation within a body that would no longer respond. Weeks passed, and George's condition worsened dramatically. His speech loss gradually evolved into complete motor dysfunction. His arms, once capable of embracing his loved ones, lay motionless. His legs, which had alerted him to his crisis, remained paralyzed. Eventually, even the smallest gestures became impossible, leaving George trapped within his own body, fully aware yet powerless to interact with the outside world. Witnessing George's physical decline was heartbreaking for his family and friends. Helplessly, they stood by his side, watching as the vibrant man they had known slipped further into immobility and silence. The man who once moved audiences with his presence now lived in a world dominated by silence, each passing day a painful reminder of the limitation that now defined his life. 
the medical team's prognosis shattered any lingering hope of recovery. The doctors explained that the stroke had caused severe neurological damage and the chances of regaining mobility or speech were slim. Permanent paralysis was now inevitable. Accepting that George, who had once captivated audiences, might now be confined to silence forever was an unbearable truth for those who loved him. Despite his physical limitations, George's spirit remained resilient. He refused to give in to despair. His determination to communicate, no matter how small the gesture, became a testament to the strength of his spirit. Although he could no longer lead with his voice or preach from the pulpit, his presence alone conveyed powerful messages to those around him. His loved ones stayed close, offering their support and holding onto their faith, praying for a miracle against all odds. Over time, however, it became increasingly clear that time was slipping away. George continued to fight with everything he had, his loved ones drawing strength from his courage in the face of adversity. Each attempt at communication reminded them that while his body was figgling, his mind and spirit were still alive. The emotional toll on those close to George was immense. Watching the once vibrant man slip away, unable to express himself, was agonizing. Yet, they clung to every moment, cherishing the time they had with him and finding meaning even in his silence. His struggle showed them that our essence is not confined to our physical abilities. Even when faced with overwhelming challenges, the human spirit can endure. As his medical crisis unfolded, doctors investigated the factors leading to George's devastating stroke. Their research revealed a silent and deadly adversary, type 2 diabetes. For years, this chronic illness had quietly eroded George's health, its effects accumulating without visible signs. The untreated diabetes had weakened his circulatory system and contributed to the formation of the clot that ultimately led to his stroke. The illness had silently damaged his blood vessels, thickened his arteries, and increased the risk of clotting. In recent years, George had embarked on a personal mission to take control of his health, aiming to combat diabetes with the same commitment that characterized his ministry. He adopted a strict vegan diet, eliminating processed foods and sugary items, and replacing them with healthier options, hoping these changes would reverse the damage and free him from the disease's grip. Despite his best efforts, however, diabetes had already done irreversible damage to his body. On October 29th, 2024, at precisely 8 a.m., George G. Bloomer's long and courageous battle came to an end. Despite the tireless work of his medical team, his body could no longer withstand the cumulative effects of the stroke and the relentless damage caused by diabetes. His loved ones who had prayed for a miracle gathered by his side, providing comfort in his final moments. George's passing left a profound void, both for his family and for the many people he had inspired through his faith. The news of his death resonated deeply within the communities he had touched. George was not just a pastor, but a beacon of hope, reaching people from all walks of life through his ministry. From the members of the Bethel Family Worship Center to the viewers of his television broadcasts and congregations worldwide, George's influence was immense and far-reaching. His absence leaves a gap that cannot be filled, not only in the hearts of his loved ones, but also in the lives of those who drew strength and guidance from his words. In many ways, George's life is a reminder of the silent battles many people face. His story underscores the importance of vigilant health management and the harsh reality that even the strongest among us are vulnerable to the silent ravages of illness. Throughout his life, George's faith, resilience, and unwavering dedication to serving others never wavered. His ministries, the leaders he trained, and the messages he shared will continue to inspire future generations, carrying forward his legacy of faith, compassion, and love. George G. Bloomer was a man of extraordinary faith, strength, and vision. Although his journey on this earth has ended, his legacy will shine on. His words, teachings, and life's work will continue to inspire countless others, 
serving as a testament to the power of faith and the resilience of the human spirit. Rest in peace, George. You will be deeply missed, but your impact will endure forever. A tribute to a life dedicated to faith, hope, and the strength to overcome. Bishop George G. Bloomer began ministering at the tender age of 17 in his hometown of Brooklyn, New York. He diligently served his pastor and church with the upkeep of the building, caring for the needs of the ministry, while simultaneously striving to stay focused on the mandate that the Lord had placed upon his life to preach the word of God without compromise. Through patience and the ability to hear the voice of God, the deliverance ministry we know today as Bethel Family Worship Center, the church on Dow Street was birthed. Impacting his community of Durham, North Carolina, and the nation as a whole, his powerful and anointed ministry continues to be used of God to set the captives free, set at liberty them that are bruised and shake principalities and powers, leading the lost, the Christ. He is author of a bestseller entitled Witchcraft in the Pews, which continues to destroy the yokes of bondage over the lives of many. Other books he has written include When Loving You Is Wrong, But I Want to Be Right, Oppressionless, 101 Questions Women Ask About Relationships, The Witching Craft, Weapons for Warriors, This Is War, and Crazy House, Sane House, co-authored by wife, Jeannie Bloomer. Finally, as founder of Blooming House Publishers, Bishop Bloomer has opened the door for new authors and ministers of the gospel to spread the word of God through their own written and oral works. Have you ever desired to write a book, but didn't know where to start? For quality publishing, we're the one. George G. Bloomer is an evangelist, pastor, author, televangelist, speaker, and entrepreneur. He is the pastor and founder of Bethel Family Worship Center, a multicultural ministry in Durham, North Carolina. Bloomer is also the founder of G.G. Bloomer Ministries, where he travels internationally delivering religious messages. Bloomer also has a show, Spiritual Authority, on the TCT Network. He was the host of the television program, Rejoice in the Word, which aired on Friday nights on the Word Network until his departure in September 2019. He now hosts the television show, The Battleground, every Saturday night on TCT Network. As an entrepreneur, he founded Blooming House Publishers and Blooming Records. George Bloomer founded Bethel Family Worship Center in 1996 after conducting a 30-day old-fashioned Holy Ghost Crusade in Durham, North Carolina on Liberty Street. The first service began on Sunday morning after the tent revival in the TQ Business Complex on Corcoran Street, downtown Durham, and later moved their services to 515 Dowd Street in Durham, North Carolina. Clert International Assemblies is an organization that provides covering for independent churches. The founder, Bishop George G. Bloomer, is the presiding bishop and overseer. The purpose of Clert is to prepare men and women for spiritual service in Clert assemblies and in other Christian ministries internationally. Citation needed.